Today's guest hustler is TV presenter and Radio 1 DJ, Nahal. I'm in Glasgow. Unless it's something particularly Scottish themed involving tossing cables, playing bagpipes, I have no idea what is going to happen to me. Hello? Hello. Can you walk across the bridge and then down the footpath and I'll meet you at the point? All right, cool. This programme is amazing. I look at it and I've just seen, you know, some of the guys who've done it before. I just thought, can I do that? Could I get in that situation and act it out? Could I look them in the eye and lie to them? I don't know. And now today I'm going to get a chance to find out whether I can, so I'm really excited, yeah. Well, let me tell you a little bit about what we're yeah. going to be doing. Today, we're going to be pulling off an audacious scam. OK, we like that word. The question is, how do you sell something that doesn't actually belong to you without stealing it in the first place? No idea. No idea. <laughs> Shall we get going? Yeah. I'll tell you more about it. Yeah. Nahal's going to have to achieve a double-double. Two scams with two marks in two rooms. The hustlers have hired some rooms in a luxury country hotel. The guys lead Nahal as Jess waits outside reception to meet a man about some art. Hello. This guy's come here to buy a highly collectible sculpture and that makes him the mark. Jess is going to be doing an awful lot of leading people around today, and timing will be crucial. Right now, she's taking the mark to Paul. He's playing the role of art dealer Rob Marks. He's selling a piece that's worth a lot of money. I'd just like to take a seat. Rob Marks, this is Peter. Oh, Peter, how are you? Have a seat. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you find the place okay? Uh, yes. While Paul entertains the mark, Jess goes back to meet some guards from a security firm in charge of transporting the precious item from a local gallery to the hotel. They've been told it's being used for a magazine photo shoot and for insurance purposes, they mustn't let it out of their sight. Jess walks the officer through the grand hall. I think, I think that's the piece arriving. It looks like security, but Susie's just... And right past Paul and the watching Mark, and into a corridor leading to the room where Nahal, Alex and Jazz have set the stage for the first part of the scam, the photo shoot. Nahal's first role is to play the long-suffering assistant to Alex, a temperamental photographer prone to hissy fits. Jazz is also getting an earful as the apprentice. I mean, you should know whether we do need bad lighting or not. Is that the... Hi. Oh, great, it's here. Because it's being photographed for a magazine, the piece has been loaned by the owner, so it's free for the day. And there it is, three beautifully cast birds in flight. Made from solid bronze, it weighs a ton and is worth a five-figure sum. All right, good. OK, now I just wanted everybody to get off my set in front of my life. Being the artist that he is, photographer Alex insists on everything being just right before he starts shooting. So can I ask you to take that outside? If you... The prima donna photographer sends one of the guards out of the room. Would you just like to take a seat there? Thank you. Thank you. There's uh, some papers or something you can have a look at. The other guard is left alone to keep his eye on the sculpture, making him the second mark. If it goes, don't worry, I'll get it. He's asked to sit out of the way of the photo shoot, in fact, for this scam to work, it's vital that he doesn't move from that chair. That's so good. I'm just going to change this light. Do you want... Don't walk past there! Everybody stop crossing the light. We're pressed for time. All right, sorry. Just don't cross. Sorry. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah, I'm sorry. Right, OK. Photographer Alex is starting to boss his underlings around. Nahal and Jazz definitely aren't getting an easy ride from their boss. No, back, back. back okay, sorry. Sorry. It's like working with a bunch of amateurs, honestly. It's not funny. Sorry. Oh, that's kind of working for me there. Jay, what do you think? Yeah, it is. The silhouette is what we're going for. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice silhouette. Yeah. Let me just shoot a couple of test ones. Sorry, sorry. The Mark's forced to witness the outrageous workplace harassment. And though he can't see the sculpture, its silhouette is plainly visible to him on the screen at all times. 
Okay, I don't need me. that, Jay. You know I don't need that. Just this checking. Is, this is not your first shoot. Okay? No, I was just checking. So just, just try and keep up. Looks like it's going to be a long wait. Back in the main hall, the other Mark is getting anxious right. to get on with his deal and buy some valuable art. I'm just into the girl, carrying that much cash on me. I feel very nervous about it. That's kind of why we do this here rather than the middle of town, you know. Well, the sooner I get the money off me, I'll feel much better. The sooner I have your money in my hands, I'll be a lot well, happier too. I'll go along with that. <laughs> okay. Here's Jess to help the Mark part with his money a bit quicker. So, Bob, just let you know, they're going to be about another 10 minutes. Do you two want to come through to the whiskey room? It's a bit more comfortable there. I think that sounds perfect. Is that okay? So, why don't you bring your, uh, why don't you bring your whiskey through? Yes. Do you want me to take that for you? Jess makes sure to give him the first class treatment as she takes him to a meeting room that happens to be right next door to the photo shoot. Ah, uh, lovely. Right. Jess leaves Paul to talk business with the Mark. She heads straight over to let Alex know everyone is in position. Jay, be quiet. Just for one second, let me do my job, all right? Gonna get in my own way. Yeah? Sorry, mate, I'll get it. Um, so if you wanted any water or anything to eat or drinks? Um, no, we're OK, actually. Thank you. That's the signal to Alex, Jazz and Nahal. It's time for the next part of the scam. The hustlers plan to sell this very sculpture to the mark in the next room. But what about that guard? Just take that off for a second. I want to clean the plinth. This is where Nahal comes in. He removes the sculpture from the plinth. Get up from there. Just bring it over here. Sensing the sculptures on the move, the guard is on his feet and starts moving around. This is a bad thing. It's vital the mark stays in his chair by the door, because when he's seated, he can't see the other door, which is the one the Howl plans to slip through. You're all you're right to take a seat, mate. Jazz tries to convince him to sit down but he's having none of it. Clearly, it can't be in two places at once. So to keep the mark fooled, Alex quickly replaces the bronze with a worthless cardboard replica. Just... Nahal lifts the statue and makes for the door as Alex and Jazz keep obscuring the mark's view. So I don't know where the They're just are. here, okay? Just, you're trailing everything. Just come back when you've got the black stuff. Done. So can I ask you to have a seat? Sorry, I know it's, but you're just reflecting lights if, off there. If it there. goes, don't worry, I'll get it. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Alex keeps the mark busy. As long as he stays where he is, they'll be OK. But if he looks behind that screen, the game will be up. Nahal now only has moments to change for the next part of the scam. The photographic assistant is becoming a security guard to take the sculpture through to the adjoining room and one admiring mark. Come in. Yes, of course, Mr. Marks. I'm not as strong as I look. <laughs> that really is stunning. I've seen pictures. This is a, isn't it amazing? And the photographs don't do it any justice at all. I mean, it's totally amazing. The scene's now set for the sale. Earlier today, Radio 1 DJ Nahal helped the hustlers pull the wool over two different marks in the same scam. They've borrowed a piece of art, and somehow they plan to make money from it. What a piece. The catch? It's not theirs to sell, and neither Mark knows that yet. It's only a matter of time before the security guard notices that the valuable sculpture he's looking after isn't where he thinks it is. In Two Rooms, Part 2. Alex is still shooting a silhouette fake of the expensive sculpture, whilst Paul's busy talking about the real one right next door. Meanwhile, Jess is going to bring someone new into the mix. And finally, Nahal's still looking mean playing the security guard. Bob, your value is here. Oh. Hi, how are you? Hi. Rob. As with all major art deals, it's important to have an independent valuer authenticate the piece to assure the mark that he's buying a genuine work of art. It's just arrived, actually. We're still kind of okay. taking it in. Just like that sculpture, this guy's 100% genuine and he gets straight to work. 
Alan Glassman. Yes. Before parting with any cash, the Mark needs to be completely convinced he's getting value for money. So what's this lump of bronze really worth? You'd be struggling to pick up anything like this retail for less than £10,000. The sculpture is worth £10,000. The valuer has given his assessment and Jess leads him away before anyone asks any awkward I've questions. I've ordered you a cab. It's going to be here in about one minute if you're still... Next door, that cardboard cutout won't fool the guard forever. So Alex and Jazz decide it's time to make an exit. You know, how long have I mean, he experienced that? Does it take to go to the van? The frustrated photographer goes off to track down his useless apprentice. Do you want me to change any of these over? No, no, leave it as it is. Just stay there. Thank Take you. care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. The buyer is now totally convinced the bronze is the genuine article. So all that's left is to close the deal. So, um, I, I hate to do this, but there is the matter of money to discuss. Um, you said to me you brought cash. Half cash and half cash. Yes, he, he mentioned that. I was kind of hoping it was all cash, but that's okay. Ah. Ka-ching. Very good. I think that um, our security firm can drive it for you. I'll you... take your work on it. It'll be secure anyway. Yeah, I mean, you know, so far they haven't lost anything yet. Have you lost anything yet? Not to the best of my life. Yeah. I never realised it had an eye for something. The hotel manager wants a word with Mr. Marks. Sorry to disturb. But you mentioned putting something in our safe and it's on a time lock. He does look an awful lot like that photographer from next door, only in different clothing. You've got a window of five minutes. All right. Uh, yeah. Would you be so good as to make sure that goes into my box? Paul hands the five grand cash to Nihal. Right. OK. OK. Thank you. Sorry Thank you. Sorry that. to disturb. Alex will show him to the safe. Yeah. Um. Sorry, could you sign these um, documents so I can get them faxed off as soon as And possible? here's another interruption. Jess has some urgent business that requires Paul's attention. I'll be right back. I'll see you in a couple of minutes, okay? okay? I'll bring you another whiskey. Yeah. In fact, this is the getaway. <laughs> and that just leaves Jazz to get the hell out of there. right under the mark's nose. Any time you're ready. <laughs> Unaware that he's just been hustled, the mark is left to take in the full grandeur of the newly acquired bronze sculpture. And next door, the guard is still at his post, but he fills his colleague in at the first opportunity. He can't believe the 10 grand sculpture he's been guarding for the past hour is actually a worthless cardboard cutout. Following the only other exit from the room, he runs right into the other mark. Did you see a couple of guys come through here, did you? Yeah, uh, they were here with me. Right. At least the sculpture is still in the building. But the guard can't work out what's going on. He goes to find his mate, leaving the other Mark very puzzled. Hi there, sir. Hi. The security firm has been tasked with keeping the statue safe. So that's the boss's first priority. Well, at least we've got it back on that stand. The guys have been bought. We're well, looking after this for some photographers. Let's get it photographed. Well, there was a security company there who was going to deliver it. We are the security company that delivered it. To here? Yes. And we are looking after it today. Right, and you're going to deliver it to the address that I gave the, the other guy? No, we are looking after it for the photographers and then it goes back to the supplier. <laughs> Chris, could you put that back in, please? <sighs> Be careful with it, it's very valuable, can't we? Oh, I know it's valuable. We just have to be done at five thousand pounds. Right, if you could put that back in first and then we'll get the hotel manager, please. Zeke. 
Be careful with it. So how did the hustlers manage to sell something that they didn't own in the first place? Back in the den, Polly arranged to hire the piece for the day and arranged to have it delivered to the hotel. She carefully mocked up the shape of the bronze on some card and made a cutout that could be used to fool the security guard into thinking it was still on the plinth. When in fact, the whole time, it was in the room next door, being sold to another unsuspecting mark. The valuer simply added authenticity to the deal. You'd be struggling to pick up anything like this retail for less than 10,000 pounds. And after that, it was easy. Actually, I could cry at the moment, to be quite honest with you. I just feel so angry inside. It's just been a day for me, from start to finish. When the security guards come in to take away the piece, I, I, to be honest with you, I, I, I didn't know what to think. In fact, I wanted to put my head through a wall. I'm just so bloody angry. For you to live your life not wishing to be hustled, you would always have to think the worst of people. But, if, you know, if someone was trying to sell me, um, you know, three birds, sculpture made of bronze, I would make damn sure that there was no other room. I would do it out in the open. If I saw a security guard, I'd go, who do you work for? If there was um, a fellow with glasses, a really pretty woman and someone who looks kind of Greek, I'd run a mile, quite frankly. Do you know what I mean? I'm gone. The grand surroundings give this scam an air of authenticity. Until the very last minute, both parties believe they're taking part in a legitimate piece of business. And by the time they realize they're being scammed, we're a couple of miles down the road. This is not amateur hour. This is the kind of scam that professional criminals will set up to obtain high value goods. If you're in that market, you should know who you're dealing with. And if you're asked for cash, that should ring an alarm bell. Make sure you understand the kind of transaction you're going into from the outset.